Hello, my name is Martyr, and this is Let's Play Metroside. And thank you for watching. Metroside is a cyberpunk stealth game, guys, where you play a contract killer. And I just want to start off by saying that this game is hard, guys. I died like five times before completing one contract. Now, to be fair, I played the game like a barbarian trying to shoot everything, and you can't really play the game that way. But it's not necessarily the world's most easy game. Gang members are a pain in the ass, but you'll see what I'm talking about in a bit. I can't think of many games to compare it to, to be honest with you. Uh, it's just it's a really nice mashup of genre, guys, and the game is very well done. It released on Steam Early Access October 2014, which of course means that the game is still in active development. Everything you see is subject to change and not a final representation of the game. So relax and enjoy the video, guys. Metroside is developed and published by Flat Earth Games. You can go ahead and get Metroside on Steam for the low price of $6.99. Now, in the game, guys, you play a uh, TJ Trench. I think that's his name, anyways. A legendary contract killer who's on the run and low on cash. And he needs to get out of town because, well, he's a contract killer and, you know, cops are eventually going to find him. Um, the fun of this game, guys, and the frustrating part of this game is it almost plays almost like an arcade game. Uh, you're going to either beat the entire game in one playthrough, or you're going to lose and have to start over completely again. Game over, you die, start over, you don't have anything you had before. There, there isn't really, there isn't like a weird form of progression, but it's not necessarily, it's about, based on unlocks, like you unlock the ability to buy that rifle you unlock the ability to buy a shotgun but you don't start off with that shotgun or that rifle you still have to buy that with the game the cash that you earn from contracts what am i talking about well let's get into it you'll see what i mean this right here is kind of a simplistic menu system um it's really uh, this menu system's okay uh it's not necessarily the highlight of this game there isn't really much resolution options really at all i do have to say the tutorials disabled because i'm going to be talking about the game anyways what's the point of uh telling you what the, the, the tutorials and we'll just skip it all. Uh, I do have alternate movement turned on and this is actually something that suggests that you probably turn on also because the way that the movement works is that your your, moist, your mouse pointer is where your character looks and then you can use Waz to move. There is no controller support by the way. Uh, alternate movement kind of lets you move a little bit more freely with Waz. Whereas, you know, you're constantly, if you press W, you'd be moving towards your mouse pointer at all times. I prefer the alternate movement. It's just more easier for me, more, uh, a little bit more responsive. The normal movement in the game feels a little bit just clunky. It just doesn't work as well. There's also comics in this game, basically kind of explaining the prologue and the story. Uh, and they're the little pixel art animations. They're all very well done. Uh, I'm not sure if these are just placeholders or if these will be more polished or if this is it. Either way, it's still cute, it still adds to the story, uh, and it gives you an idea of what's going on in the game here. So we're going to go ahead and start off in downtown. I have gotten to the docks, but I'm going to start off in downtown, because realistically, I'm going to die. Now, when you beat a, a particular mode, you can unlock other modes, like uh, score attack mode, blaster only, uh, dead trench walking. I'm not sure what that is. And one chance. I'm not really sure what those modes are, as I have yet to unlock them. I'm not even sure if they're in the game yet. They might be, because the game kind of just unlocks things kind of randomly. So let's talk about what you're looking at right here. On the top left, we have my blaster, basically, the gun that I have equipped, which uh, I'm not going to pull out right now, because if I pull it out right now, I could get killed or arrested or just a whole bunch of crazy ass crap that could happen to me. Below that, we have the number of credits I have, which, as you can see, is a big old whopping zero. To beat the board, I need to get 2,000 credits. That is your goal, and that number gets uh, kind of increasingly higher and higher as you get deeper into the boards. On the top right, we have basically kind of like my police heat. Uh, how much the cops are aware of my presence in the area, if I've done something sloppy... This number will increase and basically will go from like low to high or low to medium or, you know, any number in between. It also shows you how many cops are actually actively looking for you. So, for instance, 0 of 1 means no cops are looking for me. And there's only one cop in the area. To the left of my money, we have a little um, a compass is the best way to describe it. And that kind of points you towards your contract, your, your contact, I should say. And that person is who will give you your contracts. 
for you know finding people and killing them and collecting money so that way you can eventually buy your way out of this board this particular sector or you could buy guns etc 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 there is also i think there's like a little bit of a mini map i'm not really sure exactly where i remember being a little bit of a mini map maybe i'm crazy no it doesn't seem like there is so let's go ahead and turn towards the uh contract now like i said the control schemes are just really simplistic i'm using waz right now to kind of control my character and you can see he's kind of always looking towards my mouse pointer. I don't know if you can see that on the screen or not right now because my, my film thing's weird. Uh, so it's, it's really simplistic as far as the control schemes go. Uh, my left button basically kind of controls my shooting. Oh, God. What have I done? What have I done? Well, we're about to see me die a horrible death. Remember what I told you? Pulling out your gun could quickly lead to your death? This is what I was talking about. Oh, my God. He's shooting on me. Oh, I'm dead. I'm dead. Game over. So, right-clicking basically whips your gun out. Um, and then you kind of have to hold down the left mouse button to shoot. I died there. Uh, normally there's like a button that you could press to kind of restart it, but it's because it's early access, it's not necessarily working all too well. Um, so yeah, that was, gives you an example of the dangers that you have to be worrying about. You have to be worrying about civilians. You have to be worrying about cameras. You have to be worrying about, you know, these cops flying in these really over-technical machines above your head. And it really, you know, I will say about the aesthetics of the game, cyberpunk-wise, it, it, it kind of captures that. I wish it was a little bit more cyberpunk -y. I guess they're going for more like a Blade Runner feel necessarily than, let's say, like a, like a Shadow Run feel. And it does accomplish that really well with all the flying cars and over all that. I really enjoy that aspect. So let's go ahead and take a contract finally. You can actually see the bare bones of this game. Now, like I said, there's two modes that you basically can... Two things you can do with your, your contact here. You can either buy your travel papers for 2,000 credits, which we don't have, or you can take a contract. When you take a contract, you'll be presented with many different kinds of contract, and it actually unlocks more difficulty, more complicated contracts as you get deeper into the game. So some of them are more simplistic. Like, for instance, this $150 contract, this guy has a tracker on him, which basically is that first little symbol right by the credit amount, the, the thing to the right of the C. Uh, he doesn't have a gun, he doesn't have a time limit, he's not paranoid, and I'm not sure what the question mark is. I don't think I've encountered that one yet. Uh, but maybe he a little bit more inquisitive. I'm not really sure. But as you look down at the different contracts, like for instance, look at this 225 credit one. Uh, it shows that the gun is red and it has an exclamation point. Well, that basically means that he has a weapon, first off and foremost. And he's going to be a little bit more keenly aware of if he's being followed. So you kind of need to kind of look at the contracts and pick the ones that you want to do. Obviously, the more dangerous the contract is the more cash you're going to get. So we're going to start with a simple contract. One thing I really like about this game is it kind of gives you a little bit of information about the people you're going to assassinate. It tells you like their name, their age, uh, what's going on with them. I kind of like that a lot. And it gives a little bit of a personal touch to it, even though you're going to murder them. So now that we've activated the mission, uh, we got to basically follow our compass here to where our target is, who apparently is right beside us. And then we're going to kill him like this. Now when we kill him, uh, we're going to pick up the object, which is his wallet, which is his cash, and then we're going to get our money. And we can hide this body. We can actually get bonuses for hiding this body. Like, we put it in the sewer hole, and now we're basically free around to basically walk around and do whatever we want. And we get bonuses for actually hiding bodies, or doing the witnesses, or, you know, just doing it stealthfully. If you mess things up, though, and you have witnesses, and you get sloppy, you don't earn as much cash, you just get the base uh, contract price, and that's it. But as you can see, because there was no one around, there's no cameras, nothing like that. We basically just killed them, got our money's worth, and now we can, you know, move on to the next contract and basically earn more cash. Now, what else does the cash serve purpose for? Well, let's do one more contract, and maybe I'll get the chance to show you that. I'm gonna just take another simple $150 one. I'm not looking for anything too fancy here. Again, the guy's like right there, so I'm just gonna kill him. Okay, cool. Now, there was a camera nearby. I don't think it spotted me when I did that, though. You can see the camera by its lines right here. It's kind of going up and down this green line right here. If I were to pull out my gun or do something stupid in front of this camera, then the police would be immediately alerted. Uh, and I'd be in deep sh Well, be crap. So now that I have 453 credits, you can actually buy things in this game. You can actually walk up to these little green circles right here that are kind of like vending machines that sell weapons. Why do vending machines sell weapons? Well, it's a dystopian future. What do you expect? Of course, vending machines sell weapons, for God's sakes. Uh, we could buy basically a shotgun, which are illegal. We could buy a rifle, which are illegal. Uh, you could buy a whole multitude of different kinds of items that you unlock as you get deeper into the game also. 
So when I first started the game, for instance, I didn't have the shotgun or the rifle. I actually unlocked that by completing contracts consecutively and getting deeper and deeper into the game. That's why I mean that the game does have a form of progression, but it's more based off unlocks necessarily than you keeping something. So if I were to buy this shotgun, which we're going to go ahead and do right here, for instance, uh, now that I have the shotgun, it's mine for this playthrough. When I die or if I beat this board, I lose it. It's gone, but I can get it back in by buying it again on the next board, obviously. You can also buy tools. I'm not really sure how you use the tools quite yet. Like for instance, this one's called Little Friend Hollow Lure. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to buy it because I'm kind of curious. These tools basically are kind of like not necessarily weapons to murder people with, even though you can buy like a an explosive or a flashbang to blind people, an anti-drone EMP, lots of cool stuff it sounds like that you can buy to kind of throw people off your track. I'm not sure how you use it though, like, is there a button? Oh, you know what? Okay, so, I'm sorry. I thought that was a, um, a mini-map below the compass. That is like your secondary item. How do you use it though? Huh. Is there a controls? Let's see, I'm kind of curious how you use that. E select. Uh, is it E then? E? No? Maybe? Maybe? Maybe not? Uh, not really sure here. What the heck is going on here? I'm whooping out my gun. I don't want to be doing that. No, I don't want to do that. Um, I'm not really sure how you use the attractors, to be honest with you. Uh, well, let's just take a contract and we'll see if it may kind of activates on its own. Uh, to be honest, there is a tutorial in the game, um, but it's not necessarily the world's greatest tutorial. It kind of explains to you things as you encounter them. Uh, it's just, it, it, it's not necessarily, I don't want you to take this in a negative way, but it's just, it's not the world's greatest tutorial system. It could do a little bit better of a job of explaining things to you, uh, than it does. Uh, because, I, like for instance, I have no idea how to use this equipment right now. It teaches you how to use guns and how to avoid civilians and all that. Which, by the way, I want you to know there is civilians in the game. Oh god. That was sloppy. Uh, and I missed it with the first round of my shotgun. That's okay, though. Your shotgun, as you can imagine, is very loud, uh, so it'll attract a lot more attention if there's other civilians around or other people basically kind of in that area, gang members or whatever. It looks like for some reason, I'm not sure if this is a glitch or not, but no civilians have actually spawned in the area. That's a little weird. I'm pretty sure that's a glitch because there's supposed to be like gang members and civilians kind of walking around right now doing things, and it's just... There's no one around town right now. I mean, it works out well for me because it gives me the chance to show you what, how the game works and all the weapons and all the contracts and all that stuff. So let's go ahead and take a little bit more of a dangerous contract this time. Uh, again, let's go for a $225 contract. Female smoker is paranoid, has a tracker on them, is armed. Awesome. Let's go. Let's find her. Let's kill her. Collect some cash. And be done with this. Now, she's the only person in town, so... Again, I don't want to do this in front of a camera. If I were to approach her too closely, uh, because she is paranoid, uh, she would probably kill me. Uh, but, you know, she didn't because, you know, I got the drop on her and blasted her with a shotgun. And because the game's kind of glitching and there's no civilians around, it's working out for me rather well right now. And, you know, that, it is early access, guys, so it is to be kind of expected. And I, I don't want you to take this necessarily for, like, you know, exactly what the game's like. It's actually, it gets really complicated. It gets really hard. Matter of fact, I'm going to go ahead and actually show you what the next board is like. Because the next board actually starts adding hazards to the game itself. There's, like, scanners, basically, that you kind of uh, can walk through that could kind of potentially screw you over. Because if you didn't notice when I bought that gun, it said illegal next to it. That shotgun. That was an illegal weapon. There's a civilian's out. It spawned finally. I'm pretty sure it was just a bug. I'm not really sure why I did that. So, if you look over here, let me just walk up to the vendor. We'll look at the weapons. As you can see, it says illegal. If I were to walk under one of those scanners that are kind of just kind of randomly placed throughout the boards, it could alert the police to my presence and 
kind of screw me over. And it gets really a lot more complicated as you get deeper into the game. There's more civilians. There's more people. There's more police presence, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. The contracts get more complicated. More, you know, like people have you have a time limit. They have a gun. They're extremely paranoid, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Let's go ahead. Thirty-year-old male smoker is paranoid. Has a tracker on them. Is armed. Let's go ahead and see if we can find them in this area. And to be honest, with you, like I said, when I first started playing the game, I kind of approached it almost very haphazardly. I kind of just started gunning people down. Oh, I bet that was a gang member. Oh, see, that was a pretty good example of just all the bad crap that could happen. I got caught by a camera. I got shot by a gang member. I'm just dead. Man, look at them. They're all like in full force. Damn. They're like, let's rape his body. Rape his body. Kill that son of a bitch. Uh, let's try that again. <laughs> There's three levels currently, by the way. Downtown, the docks, and Hilldale, as you can imagine. And each of them basically gets a little bit more complicated. As you can see also, it costs 4,000 credits to get to this particular board. Uh, to get to the next area. We'll try uh, a little bit more of a simpler contract. And that's, that's probably something that's a good idea to do. Start off a simple contract and kind of make your way up. Because the simple contracts, you can take your time. You can walk around for a longer amount of time. I can just kill this guy. Oh, God. Oh, you ran inside a building. You coward. Uh, the cops are going to be on me. Oh, no. i got to get out of here. I've got to get out of here. Oh, no. Good. He missed me. Oh my goodness, as you can see though, they kind of act realistically, if they spot you, they're going to haul ass into a building and get away from you as far as possible. And if you basically hide out from the cops long enough, the cops' attention, their heat basically kind of fades off of you and they will leave you the hell alone. So yeah, it's, it's not an easy game, it's not a hard game. Oh, these phone booths by the way, I forgot to mention these. If you have enough credits, you can actually buy, uh, you can pick credits to actually get the heat off of you. These little telephone boxes gives 40, 400 credits to hack and gets the cops right off of you and they leave you the hell alone. Let's try that again. Let's try... Um, I'm going to go for a big contract this time. I want, I want some cash. Uh, I need to do this one successfully, though. Yeah, you can see how they're what they're going for in this game, though. I, I definitely want to see more things, you know, kind of expanded upon. I want to see, like, more places to stash bodies. I want to see more uh, reactive... What? the hell is going on oh my god oh I'm dead I'm dead dude that was just bad luck man <laughs> oh my god it's just hard this game's just like I said it's hard guys you have to be very careful you have to plan your strategy you have to watch these guys and follow them for hours there's no there's no going into this this isn't a bullet hell game there's no going in there just ah, guns are blazing and killing everybody <laughs> we'll try it a couple more times here we'll go back to the docks god we're doing terrible it's awesome i love it i like games that are challenging guys yeah but as far as the future of this game goes, i just want to see them expand more upon it more give more to it you know um, you know, add more weapons, add more different kinds of objectives, maybe. Uh, maybe, you know, uh, maybe a little bit more vehicles, I don't know. There's a lot of things that they can add to this type of game to make it really cool. I enjoy I enjoy these types of games. And, you know, even though, graphically speaking, it's simple, it does, like, a really good job of giving you an idea of what's going on around you. I enjoy the rain, it's almost noir-esque. Matter of fact, if they could have, like, a black and white mode, that'd be kind of cool, I think. Uh, <laughs> Yeah, I think this game would also flourish probably in the mobile market. I think it'd be kind of cool there to play this game maybe on like a tablet. Um, I would really like to be kind of like, maybe like a little bit of a zoom. Because there's times where I kind of want to see... Sometimes I can, I can miss like there, if there's a civilian by, walking by because they blend in with the environment. I mean, that, that's just part of the challenge of the game. That could be just it itself. It could be just part of the game. But sometimes I just like I miss somebody and I'm just like, oh, it's not because... I didn't see them, it's just because I couldn't really, I had to squint almost to kind of see them. So a zoom feature might be nice, guys. I mean, all, it's like, it's a really fun game. I enjoy this game. I'm curious to see where it goes. I'm curious to see, uh, I mean, right now it's already pretty much like a fully fledged game here. Uh, so to see where else they take this will be really interesting because the game already really runs very well. I mean, it has a couple bugs here and there. The control schemes are kind of wonky, like I said. But all in all, I mean, the game already works very, very well, guys. 
Uh, there's also Steam achievements, so if you're into that, there's no Steam cards yet, but that may be something they add on into the game a little bit later on, guys. And that's kind of a good idea wrap up of what uh, you know Metro Metroside is like, guys. And you get different kinds of weapons as you get deeper into games, you complete more contracts. I would also for them to kind of give you a way to kind of see your progress, like you know, kill 30 people with a shotgun to unlock the Maverick pistol. I, I'd like to know how it is I make progress so I can aim to do that. Uh, you know, give me kind of like an objective almost, aside from, you know, just killing people with contracts. I think it would be, give me a little bit more to do. But again, this is all early access, so that's the point of this. This is that, you know, get that feedback and do things and take people's, uh, uh, you know, feedback and put it in the game, hopefully. And you can do that. You can give them your advice. I highly, you know, recommend you if you buy this game, tell them what you think about the game. It'll, it'll make the game more better, guys. So to wrap up, guys, once you start learning the finer points of Metroside, guys, and stop acting like a homicidal maniac like I did, the beauty of the game starts revealing itself to you guys. This isn't a game for those who like to see everything go boom. It's a subtle game. You want to take it slow, plan accordingly. Now, with all that said, though, like I said, Metroside still has a few wrinkles it needs to work out. Its control scheme is okay, but it feels slightly clunky at times. Moving in other directions can be a little bit of a pain, but that's why I suggest you go ahead and activate that alternate movement mode. It works a heck of a lot better than the natural movement mode they uh, kind of start you off uh, with uh, by default. Uh, the tutorial doesn't do a terribly good job of explaining things, and I think that kind of needs to be maybe a little bit more polished out, guys. And because it is an early access game, bugs are, be to, are to be expected. Otherwise, though, guys, it's a fun game, a good price, and it's it's difficult, but not, you know, ripping your hair out difficult. And I had a really good fun time with this game, guys. So if you enjoyed what you see, go ahead and give this game your support, guys. Always nice to support indie developers. Big thanks to the developer for a chance to check this game out. Thank you for watching. Remember to subscribe and share, and I'll keep bringing you awesome games, guys. Till next time. Play more indie games.